today's watercolor is going to be a picture of an iris in a little bud vase that I have. So basically I'm just going to start looking for shapes that I see. And anytime you're drawing or painting, the most important thing is to look for the shapes you see and the way you see them. The way you see the shapes are called your perspective. So that's that can change if you're sitting in a different seat than someone else or if you're looking at your item from a different direction than another friend is, then you have a different perspective of what's happening in your picture. Start with some basic, really light sketching lines. So you want to hold your pencil lightly and just gently put down the lines for what you see. From my perspective, this bud vase has an oval opening on the top because I'm not looking directly down on the circular opening. And I'm looking for shapes within the shapes too. And that's gonna help me color this to make it look more realistic. So that's why I have all these extra little lines in there because I see different shades in my, in the, uh, actually it's a clear glass. And then of course I've got the stem of the iris and it is green. It's kind of an optical illusion. Once it hits the water, it changes and um, you'll see a different perspective. the water and the light bend it. It's a little tricky, but you want to try to match up your sides of the little bud base so that it looks like the two sides are parallel. They're matching as they go down. And the glass is also bending our perspective of this stem through here. It's important to get a nice light sketch of your object first and that'll direct you so you know where to put your paint colors and everything. You can actually erase the sketch lines just to where they're light enough that you can just barely see them if you prefer not to see them through your paints, especially in the areas that might be yellow or really light colored. I'm just following along the outline of what I see here. Sometimes I add a little bit of lines into areas that I know are going to be darker to to almost remind me to darken that little section there. And it's tricky, but you wanna keep an eye on how this petal relates to this petal. If this petal is this big, where does this petal start? Each thing relates to another thing in a different way, and that will help you get your item in the right shape and the right size. This part of the petal is very really flat, and that's because it curved over here. darker under here where it's actually curving. Here are some of my supplies. I like to keep a variety of brush sizes on hand. Um, the larger brushes are for painting backgrounds and larger sections of my picture and then the smaller brushes are for getting into the details. I also keep a paper towel on hand and that way if I have a mistake I can dab it off or if I need to just dry off my brush a little bit I can put it on there. I have a jar of water. Jars are better than cups because they're heavier, so they have a less likelihood of spilling. And I have my paints, and then I use the top of my paints to mix them in. I always like working from the lightest to the darkest colors. It helps a lot if you make any mistakes. So I am going to look for as many yellows and pale colors as I can find. But I don't want a very, very bright yellow, so I'm adding water to make it lighter. And then I'm just going to apply it where I see these little yellow pieces of the flower here and there. That way this can dry while I'm working on some other areas of the picture. And I like to put a few different shades of green into the stem. The more shades of color you put and the more details you can add, the less flat your piece is going to look in the end. And you just keep looking at your subject over and over and seeing what else, what else do I need to add. Just keep glancing up at it. Sometimes you have to get imaginative with what colors would be seen in it, but you can look at your base and see if it's picking up any colors from the background. Or if you like aquas and purples, you can put in your favorite colors. So you just want to put in lots and lots of detail. And look for the little shapes that you see as you're putting the colors in. And you can move your brush in different directions to help with giving your item some shape. Now that I've 
added in all my lightest colors, I have realized there's some areas that I want to leave some highlights. So I'm going to take my water right here where it's still a little wet and do this technique and it's kind of a watercolor trick where you put a little extra water and you can see that lightening up right there. So I'm going to lighten it up with the water and then I'm actually going to take my paper towel and pull the color off by just dabbing that and just making a little bit of a highlight there by lightening that area up. So then you can look through for some more highlights that you might want to add. And it's easier to do this before it gets too dry. Otherwise you might end up doing a lot of scrubbing with your paintbrush. And there's this dark area here in my, in my uh, base, my water, that I'm going to go ahead and add in with that purpley gray color. Sometimes it's nice to just pull in some of the same colors from your subject so that it kind of ties the whole painting together. I'm adding water and some more purple to that same color. So it becomes a little darker, but then the water is going to lighten it up so it's just a more grayish purple tone here. So I've changed brushes into a smaller one. For the now I have the lightest tone, so I'm going to look for the medium tones of purple. They've got some veins and stuff. I want to make sure those details are seen. You don't want to outline your picture either. You want to you want to paint right up to the lines without drawing a harsh outline with your paintbrush, and that helps with the realism of the picture. The shading is the way you make the outlines stand out. It's okay to leave some white spots too in watercolor. It's kind of a fun thing to do is just leave some little white highlights here and there that are completely unpainted. This is one of the darkest areas back here. So I'm putting more pigment in this area, but I will probably come back with another shade on top of that even. See how the water just moves the color throughout. If your picture isn't dry, it's a good idea to take a little break and let it dry a little bit before you keep working in the next color because they're going to run if you don't. Sometimes it's on purpose to get the colors to run. And sometimes you want to be more controlled and have them not run. So the way to do that is to put less water on your brush if you want to be very controlled about what you're painting. And keep a pretty dry brush. It's almost a dry brush technique there. You'll want to use a larger brush to create a wash. So you can use this, or I'm just going to use my fan brush because it covers a lot of area. My picture is still very wet. You can do your background before or after you've done your main picture. It's up to the artist. But if you've already created a wet picture, you're not going to want your wash to touch it. So you can see I'm carefully avoiding the edges of my picture here, of my subject. Just laying down some water and then I'm going to pick a color that I think would complement my subject pretty well and that will be the wash and I like mixing a handful of colors usually your background doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be a table or a curtain or anything like that you can just pick colors that you like that you think work well and then just mesh them together sometimes your wash will start to dry before you get all the color on and in that case, you just add a little more water to the dried areas. Now I'm going to add some green to go with that aqua blue and just give it not such a flat look. And since it's a wash, it's just kind of blending right in. Sometimes you can hold your paper up and let it run too. some grays or reds or purples or whatever you wanted. The reason I did not add a lot of purple into this background is because I like the contrast. So I like my subject to be a completely different color from my background so that you are sure to see the subject. Now I'm looking for my deepest areas of color. The darkest areas on my flower here. So I'm going back and I'm touching in some of the darkest areas with my paint. 
Here you can see this is running a little bit, so I am going to use a dry brush to lift the color out and to correct that from becoming a big mistake. Now I've mixed in some blue with my purple to just add another shade to this. You don't even have to paint the flower purple, even if you're looking at it and it's purple. You just remember that there are light and dark shades. You could make this any color you wanted. So you could do all yellow and have light and dark shades of yellow and maybe a tiny touch of orange in there. There are lots of different ways to get really creative with it. You'll see how I'm curving with the the way the jar curves here with my paint strokes and that will help with the illusion that this is a curved jar instead of that we're just looking straight at it and it's flat. Dry brush. Adding in my last couple of shades of green. I'm going to even bring a little bit of that over here into the bottle. Just a little here and there. I like a lot of colors in the bottle. And it's important to sign it with whatever medium you've been working in. So we've been working in the watercolor. So I'm going to pick dark purple so it'll show up. So I'm going to sign my name. Do a little cross first, that's what I do. Thanks for watching.